Hello again, Bill Pfeiffer speaking from uh, <clears throat> from Mary's Field. Good, really good to, to, to be with you. A couple of days ago, we spoke a little bit about St. Maximilian Colby and the way that he uh, uh, gave his life uh, for another man in the, uh, the prisoner of war camp at Auschwitz. And uh, yesterday we spoke about, uh, about Wild Bill. Boy, that's one of my favorite stories. Wild Bill, this man who for six years, like all of the other people in prison in Wupperfell, apparently had no delirious or negative effects, you know, either psychological or physical. He was, a, he was a strong after six years because he was able to forgive, because he dealt with life in a way that the gospel calls for. And that's what he really did. He forgave uh, the people who had shot his wife and his children. And, uh, and he had seen so much pain in his own legal practice that he said, I'm not going to do that. And so, you know, really, tre really tremendous stories. I, I had the, uh, the, the, the benefit of working at, at one point at Bethlehem Catholic High School with a fellow by the name of Joe Stepansky. And uh, one day we were sitting at lunch, and it was early in the morning, maybe about 10.30. I had an early lunch, with, and uh, Joe would be sitting there with me. And it was pouring, uh, not pouring, but it was snowing. And it was already about six or eight inches deep, and it had no signs of giving up. And so everybody was thinking, well, we're going to get out of school and, and, and whatever. And uh, we were all talking about the snow because it looked like we were going to have a half a day. And uh, Joe was saying that that weekend, it was a Friday, that weekend he was going to Washington to be with eight of his fellow uh, soldiers who had been in the Bataan Death March. And uh, Joe was uh, describing a little bit about that, but not much because it was just a terrible, terrible memory. And... Uh, he said, uh, I'll never forget it. The snow doesn't bother me at all. Once you've been through something like the Bataan Death March, the snow didn't bother Joe at all. Joe was going to meet eight of his friends who were still survivors. Joe was the only one who still had his sight. All of the others were blind because of the experience. Joe was told by a doctor uh, that was in camp with him in the prisoner of war camp uh, to, uh, to eat some of the grass that was there. It had some vitamins and so on. And he was able to somehow steal a, a jar of vitamins, which he kept outside the uh, fence. And, uh, and every two or three days, he was able to take a vitamin. And he, he, uh, he, uh, you know, contrib he uh, attributed that to the, the fact that he was still able to see. But, but uh, Joe was... Uh, um, just the, the weather didn't bother him at all. And it really impressed me. It was his attitude. It was something that really mattered inside him. And a second story that I know from a friend of mine by the name of Judy, who lived in Texas, Judy was on vacation in the Philippines and was going to uh, uh, have uh, one day was going to spend uh, some time visited, visiting a leprosarium there. And she went inside this uh, kind of a monastic type wall and so on. And there was about a six or eight uh, story building. And uh, uh, Judy was a person who was very conscious about the size of her nose. She didn't like her nose no matter what, no matter what you said about it. Her nose was something that was a problem for her. And... Uh, uh, she looked up and in, uh, in, in, uh, they were going to go through the building as a uh, part of their uh, tour and visit of the leprosarium. And on looking up in about the third floor, uh, the windows were uh, a little bit glaring in the sunlight. Uh, but the people were up there uh, going like this, pointing uh, to where their noses would be, and they were laughing. And she said to herself, I'm really being insulted. They're, they're looking at my nose and they're they're laughing at my nose and I, I got to get out of here. But she thought, well, uh, I'm here and, you know, I'm a little bit bigger than that. So I'm going to go through uh, visiting this leprosarium. So she goes through and finally they get up to the third floor and lo and behold, what does she see? All of the people on the third floor don't have noses. So they were admiring her nose. You know, contrary to what she was thinking, these were people who said, I'd love to have a nose uh, just like, uh, like you have, you know? And so, uh, you know, our own spiritual life really is a matter of, of accepting who we are. You know, it's truly in his will is our peace. You know, we've been made for you, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And we make all, all of these decisions and thoughts about ourselves, and, and they have nothing to do with the reality that, that, that is 
is uh, is the person that we are. Each day we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day, the brain uh, researchers are telling us, and 90% of them are negative and, you know, actually never come true. And so it's a matter of attitude, and that has a part to play in our own spiritual life, in our own prayer life. When we come before God, we don't want to be there with an anxious heart, a tense heart, you know, worrying either about the weather or about the size of our nose, you know, to be there just as we are, allowing the body that he has given to us to be a living sacrifice of praise. And that's a really good thing to have happen uh, in our in our uh, lives so uh, let it go Uh, don't hold on to the things that uh, that pull you down and and that don't make much of a difference at all in life Uh, snow it snows you know noses are noses you know and and uh, and it all comes down to accepting who we are and allowing God to be God you know in his will is our peace says Dante Alighieri and he was a wise man in his will is our peace so as always happiness tomorrow just completely always depends on doing the truth today and that means about ourselves having the truth about ourselves not uh, blowing it up blowing something up that that causes us problems that really has no place in reality at all remember judy remember joe you know two heroes that i've met in my life that that were able to deal with this kind of attitude problem in a way that they came out of it richer, more whole, and were then able to be because they were changed and transformed to be able to touch other people. Joe really touched me at that day having lunch. I haven't forgotten that. This is about hmm, close to 40, 48 or 49 years ago. And snow never bothers me. The weather never bothers me. I can see. I, I uh, went through the Bataan Death March and I'm here and I'm alive and I'm going to meet and hug some of my buddies this weekend. Happiness tomorrow always depends on doing the truth today. God bless.